Yo. What is up? Hope you guys are having an amazing Friday. Happy Friday. We have not been live in a while. So if you guys see me kind of scanning the room, it's because I'm looking all over. So straight ahead, I'm looking at Facebook, Instagram, no, Facebook, LinkedIn. Uh, what do we got? Twitter here. And I think that's it. Um, and YouTube. And YouTube, hello. Uh, over here, we got TikTok. What's up, TikTok? Over here, we got Instagram. So as you guys join in, say hi. Let me know how your day's going. If you are, if this is like your first time watching, we say hashtag I'm here if you're watching live. Uh, and if you're on basically every other platform except TikTok, sorry, we can do a uh, hashtag replay. So you're watching the replay, all right? So this is going to be a podcast episode, guys, and I'm going to be talking to you guys about five common fitness myths, myths, so hard for me to say, five fitness myths that you need to stop falling for, okay? These are myths that I used to fall for and, you know, kind of like fuck with my head. So I want you guys to, I want your head to get unfucked from this information, all right? So if you look, if you see me kind of looking straight ahead or not answering any of your questions, that's because we're recording this for a podcast. If you do have any questions, just type it in the chat after. And if we've got time, I'll get to you. All right. So we are going to be starting in three, two, one. Welcome to the Real Results Podcast. Today, we are going to be talking about five common fitness myths. I said it right this time. Five common fitness myths that we need, that we're going to debunk and that you need to stop falling for, all right? These are fitness mistakes and these are fitness myths that I have fell for in my fitness journey. I've been doing this. I've been coaching over 11 years. I've been in the fitness game longer than that. (laughs) Um, But I want to talk to you about some mistakes and things that I fell for. And I don't want you guys to fall for because... It just like fucks with your head, all right? So let's get right into it uh, because I respect your time and I want you guys to get the most value out of this. So number one, guys, is eating late at night. Eating late at night makes you gain weight. Eating late at night makes you gain weight. This is something that commonly gets heard or is like kind of a common misconception. And the reason for that being is we think that after 6 p.m. or 8 p.m. or when the street lights come on for whatever reason, that if we eat late at night, that, you know, that we're going to gain weight, all right? And that's not necessarily true, all right? Uh, the number one thing, if you're worried about weight loss, if you're worried about weight gain, or even if you're worried about just like maintaining the weight that you're at right now, you need to, uh, you need to worry about a calorie, a calorie deficit, which is the total number of calories that you are intaking, the total number of calories that you're eating. All right. That's the number one thing that you need to worry about. Now, I would not suggest eating right before you go to bed because it might take longer for you to digest your food. And because of that, you might feel or even you might even weigh heavier the next morning. But that's and, you know, not to me, not to mention that that can be tough for you to sleep like right after you had a big meal. Um, but it's not fully accurate, even if you weigh in heavier, because your body just hasn't had time to adjust to the food yet. All right. Um, so if you do work out late at night, um, or if you have like a late shift and you got to get your workout in, it's okay to eat after. Okay. It's okay to have food. It's okay to eat after, uh, and have a meal after you work out. Um, because you're starving, like that's fine. Don't starve yourself. Um, just, I would suggest to try to not have the meal and then fall asleep immediately because of what I just explained. All right. So that is myth number one busted. Myth number two, myth number two is lightweight, more reps to get tone, lightweight, more reps to get tone. All right. So guys, every rep range has its place. All right, high reps, low reps, medium reps, all of those rep ranges have their place. Uh, But if you are just sticking to like lightweight and heavy reps in hopes of like getting tone 
You're going to be doing reps until the cow come, the cows come home. All right. You're going to be doing reps forever. Then you're going to feel like you plateaued. And then you're going to feel like nothing is working for you. And you're going to feel like, man, it's just my metabolism or it's my age. I'm not meant to build muscle. I'm not meant to get tone. And, uh, if this sounds like you and if this sounds like this is you right now, just like silently nod your head or just say yes. Um, if you're watching live, just say that's me in the comments. Um, but, Guys, I want you to start incorporating some heavier weights. Safely, of course, all right? Safely, I don't want you to uh, go for the world record or anything or go for like a PR and you're like, that he said, and then I injured myself. Like, no, all right? Start incorporating some heavier weights safely, okay? And you can incorporate every rep range, all right? So you can incorporate rep ranges from like four to six, from eight to 12, 12 to 20, Anything past that is more of like a cardiovascular, um, but um, incorporate all kinds of rep ranges, especially heavy, heavy weight, um, no matter what your goal is, whether you're trying to build muscle, whether you're trying to lose weight, whether you're trying to tone, whether you're trying to maintain your muscle, whatever it is, um, lifting heavy, lifting heavier on some days and lifting lighter on others is going to help you shape your body. All right. So start incorporating some heavier weights, start incorporating all rep ranges. Okay, and watch your body get lean and tone right before your eyes. Okay, so that's myth number two busted. Myth number three that we're going to bust right now. I can't believe that I even have to discuss this right now because it's 2023. It is September 2023. Um, but eating carbs is going to make you fat or gain weight. There's still people out there, and I don't blame you. If you're one of these people, I don't blame you. I blame the interwebs. I blame the internets. I blame the <laughs> overindulgence of information. But there's still some people out there right now that think that if they eat carbs, that they're going to gain weight. Okay, repeat after me. Carbs don't make me gain weight. Overeating does. I'm going to repeat that again. Carbs, repeat after me. Carbs don't make me gain weight, overeating does. Now, the reason the carbs are so easy to eat is because carbs are your body's preferred energy source. So if you're really active, uh, or even if like you're stressed, or you've just been moving around all day, or all the above, okay, and you eat carbs, it's gonna be very easy to eat, They're very easy to digest, right? And you're gonna wanna eat more of that, okay? Because that's your body's preferred energy source, okay? Now, before you go away, we can also make carbs work for us and work in our favor if we are not overeating, if we're having the proper amount. And the reason, guys, that um, carbs think that carbs are, that, that people think that carbs are the enemy or the reason that carbs are the reason that they're gaining weight is because they overdo it on carbs and they don't have any limit, right? They just eat all the carbs in sight. What I recommend is having about like a fist size portion of carbs for every meal that you have paired with protein, of course. All right. So if you're not having every uh, protein in every meal, that's a whole other discussion. But you should have about a fist size portion of carbs with every meal. OK, that's going to help. Um, you're going to feel like so much more energy, guys. You're going to feel so much more energy throughout your day. You're going to feel you're going to have much more energy for your workouts. And just like you're going to feel better overall because who doesn't like to eat carbs? Right? What's wrong with you? If, that, if you don't like to eat carbs, what's wrong with you? All right. Number four, myth number four that we're going to bust is that you have to eat every two hours to speed up your metabolism. You have to eat every two hours to speed up your metabolism. Now, I do recommend my clients to eat every few hours, okay, two to three hours, but it's not for the reason of fat loss. The reason I recommend my clients to eat every two to three hours is because most people are intaking way more calories than they think through junk food, through snacks, through candy, right? But it's usually like it's usually in the means of, of these foods that I just mentioned and sodas and snacks. And those things don't really help make you feel full. Okay. So when I switch my clients from like mindlessly snacking or just like eating when they're hungry, right. To having a structured plan and to having whole meals, it can feel like you're eating a lot because even though you might be actually eating less, 
because they're actually having whole meals and eating whole meals. So by all means, like eat every two to three hours if you need to, but not for the reason of like speeding up your metabolism. It's just simply to make sure that you're intaking and you're getting the full amount of calories that you need to. Not because it's some magic pill to help you make to help make you lose fat. All right. Number five. Number five. Last but not least. Number five is that you're going to lose weight or drop weight every single day. Now, this is a common concern with a lot of people when they see the scale go up, right? If who here, if you're watching live, who here has seen the scale go up 0.2 pounds, 0.5 pounds, like one pound, two pounds, maybe even three pounds or more from one day to the next, okay? If that's been you and you freaked out, I got some good news for you. Weight loss is not linear, meaning that it doesn't just like go in a straight line. It doesn't just drop. It doesn't just drop off. You're not going to lose weight every single day, even if you hit your calories and your macros and and everything perfect. Even if you got the best amount of sleep, you drink enough water. Like, guys, it, there's so much that goes into your weight, okay, that like weighing in and stepping on the scale is not everything, all right? It's not everything. Weight loss, again, I'm going to repeat this because a lot of people need to hear this. Weight loss is not linear. It does not just go in a straight, it will not just go in a straight line. You will have your ups and downs depending on how much stress you're under or how much sleep you had or how much sleep you didn't have or how much water you drank or didn't drink or didn't drink or like we just mentioned earlier, it, you know, if you had your last meal and then fell asleep shortly after, your body might not have digested it. Um, so there's so much that goes into your into your weight loss and, and your weight that like weighing in is not everything, okay? Now, one thing I do suggest that you do is weighing in daily, all right? Now, before you freak out, before you freak out, let me tell you why you should be weighing in daily, all right? When you weigh in daily, you're going to have an average of your weight throughout the week, as opposed to if you just weigh in like once a week, your weight could have dropped three pounds or you could have gained three pounds and you'll never know. So let's say week you just weigh in once a week, you weigh in every Monday, for example, which is what I used to do. You weigh in every Monday and then the following week you weigh in again on Monday and you gain two pounds. But in actuality, if you weighed yourself throughout the week, maybe you gained two pounds just on that day and every other day you lost weight. So on average, you actually lost weight. And that can be discouraging to somebody in a fitness journey if you have been like really, you know, hammering down and like grinding at it and then you go from week to week and you gain three pounds. But you could have just gained three pounds in that one day, not every single day, all right? So the reason, and this is what I have my clients do as well, the reason that you should weigh in daily is so you can get an average of your weight throughout the week instead of just basing it off of one day. Because again, that day you could have been, the night before you could have been stressed, could have not had enough sleep, could have not had enough food, had too much food, not had enough water, so many factors, okay? So weigh yourself daily, divide it by seven, so that way you get an average of your weight throughout the week. This is a much more accurate approach than going, than doing it once a week, or even worse, uh, based off of feel. I feel like I'm losing weight, like, let's let's just cut the bullshit and find out if we actually are losing weight or not. All right. Uh, and, and I will tell you, it does take a little bit of time to get over this hump of like weighing yourself daily. Um, but once you recognize that the number is just like a form of measurement, it's one form of measurement, then you become less attached to it. All right. It's just, again, stepping on the scale and weighing yourself is important, but it's just one form of measurement. So don't get too hung up on it. All right. Now, these five myths, guys, will hopefully help you to not feel so stressed. Um, will help you along your weight loss and your fitness journey. Because I know for me, some of these helped alleviate, like once I learned this stuff, it helped alleviate so much confusion along the way. And I hope that it did this for you as well. All right. So if this helped, if this podcast helped you, I want you to screenshot this podcast, post it on your Insta on your Instagram story and tag me at Real Results Fitness. That's Real Results F T N S. Or 
Share this podcast with a friend that you know has been struggling with some of this. All right. That's it for today's podcast. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. And I will see you on the next episode. All right. Oh. All right. That is it. That is it for today's podcast. I hope you guys got a ton of value. Let me shut down all my electric devices. Thank you for tuning in on Instagram. Kiki, what's up? Thank you for tuning in on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter. Is it called Twitter anymore? No, it's not called Twitter anymore. X, YouTube, thank you guys for tuning in. TikTok, thank you for tuning in. TikTok, if you're not following me on Instagram, what are you doing with your life? It's real results, FTNS. All right. Hope you guys have an amazing rest of your evening. Hope these tips helped you. And I will see you guys on the next live. Bye. See you, Instagram.